The demon god coming up against the man known as the sorcerer killer. This is an unlikely matchup, which has had so many of us speculating who would win if both of these monsters came up against each other. Some say Yuji would win due to his untapped raw physical strength, and some say that Toji would solo our young protagonist. But in the world of Jujutsu Kaisen, it is filled to the brim with unpredictability. Akutami has created these different abilities and techniques with such intricate detail that even the weakest person can look like a literal god if they were gifted with the right curse technique or even had heavenly restriction applied to them, granting their physical prowess to shoot to the moon. In this situation though, we have two abnormal characters. By that I mean two guys that can turn the tides of a battle in a blink of an eye with just a few moves. So what exactly would happen if we put our young prodigy up against a physical beast, keeping in mind this battle is an all out war between the pair and will only be decided upon the last man standing. So with that being said, does Yuji stand a chance against Toji? Recently in the Jujutsu Kaisen anime, we were shown the full extent of what Toji can do even under the influence of Ogami, but on the other hand we had witnessed Yuji surpassing his limits in his battle against Mehito, going above and beyond, stalking Mehito as though he were his prey. However in this video we will be putting Yuji from the latest chapter against Toji's strongest form. Without a doubt this is going to be one hell of a fight, a battle of just raw physical strength. But before we do that, let's come up with a scenario for how things could go down between these two, just to give us a better visualization of this blood battle. So where exactly will this fight take place? For this battle, let's have a change of scenery. We are so used to seeing fights taking place within the heart of Tokyo, surrounded by skyscrapers. But I've decided this battle will take place at Jujutsu High, or more specifically the Tombs of the Star Corridor. <laughs> So why have I chosen this location out of all places? Well, that is simply because it fits well with Toji's plot. We saw in Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2 how he had ruthlessly headshotted Riko Amanai and demolished Suguru Ghetto. So why not put Yuji Itadori in the same conditions and see whether or not he can defeat the Sorcerer Killer. So we've got our location for this fight, but how would they both end up down there? Let's say by some miracle again, Toji has been reincarnated through the same method he was during the Shibuya Incident arc, but his brain has now been wired to destroy the tombs of the Star Corridor alongside Jujutsu Hai. As he enters, he is met by the one and only demon god, Yuji Itadori. Yuji is in a much stronger form than he was when he first arrived at Jujutsu Hai. Toji senses this great power from Yuji, but instead he pulls out a dull knife stating that is all he needs to defeat Yuji. Yuji angered at the fact that Toji thinks so little of him, as he then charges up preparing to take on the sorcerer killer. As exciting as that scenario seemed, we can't go any further without discussing the power scaling rules of this fight. I mentioned this in my previous versus battles, but these rules change between each battle, so let's run down the list of rules. Number 1, Toji will be able to use his Split Soul Katana, Inverted Spear of Heaven, Chain of a Thousand Miles and Playful Cloud. Number 2, for this battle, I'll give Yuji the benefit of the doubt and grant him access to Marquis Slaughter Demon, which he had used in the earlier chapters of the series. Number 3, both abilities and achievements will be compared to draw up an ultimate decision for how this could all end. Number 4, this is Yuji in his raw physical state without Sukuna being inside of him, so technically we'll be seeing Yuji from the latest chapter going up against Toji. Number 5, this battle is a hypothetical one, so don't take it too seriously. Everyone has their own opinions on how this fight could end up, so let me know what yours would be down in the comments section below. Those are the 5 specific rules for this matchup. Another one to keep in mind is that the winner goes to the person who is the last one standing, meaning it's to the death or to the one who's unconscious. It's not the first time Toji has come up against a teenager, but just like the previous time, maybe Toji loses again, who knows. Yuji and Toji are both physical monsters, but what sort of abilities and fighting achievements have they both accomplished? 
for them to have an even battle. We'll start off with Toji Fushiguro, or as others may know him as the Sorcerer Killer. So the basic understanding of Toji's character is the fact that he has had heavenly restriction applied to him. Meaning that instead of acquiring a gifted curse technique as the Zenins would call it, he was instead granted immense physical capabilities. This also spurred on the idea of Toji having no cursed energy, but rather lack of cursed energy, basically meaning his cursed energy storage would be close to zero. As for Toji's upbringing, he was treated worse than an animal at the Zenin household, being thrown into the disciplinary pits filled with curses so that he could be taught a lesson. That is where the scar on his lip originates from, but due to this torturous treatment, it would create a monster within Toji. His physical prowess would elevate to levels unknown, causing fear amongst the Zenin clan, while some admired him for his insane strength. But once Toji had left the Zenin clan, he would go on to become a contract killer, or in other terms, sorcerer killer. However, this part right here, Akutami kept hidden. We don't know what sort of battles he had undergone as the Sorcerer Killer and how powerful his opponents were, but it's safe to say that he must have faced off against first grade sorcerers on the regular, and he may even come up against special grade curses during his lifetime. But the first real fighting achievement which we had witnessed was when he had faced off against 18 Gojo and Ghetto in the year of 2006. At this time, Gojo and Ghetto were only a year older than current Yuji, but the pair were so powerful that they rightfully earned their spot as special grade sorcerers. But when Toji had ambushed a tired and worn out Gojo by using a dull katana, Gojo was surprised at how he couldn't detect him and how Toji effortlessly eased his way through the barriers of Jujutsu Hai without getting caught. But what is even more of a shock is the fact that Toji was able to pierce Gojo. But here is where we have to keep in mind both Gojo and Ghetto were nowhere near their full potential during this time. Both were still discovering their capabilities and how to best use their own curse techniques. Another thing I'd like to mention, it seems that it was years since Toji picked up a contract and killed someone. He even mentions that he's become a little rusty. But regardless of those factors, Toji would go on to display unworldly physical abilities, slicing right through Ghetto's hookworm curse and having a different blade at disposal, which would be his split soul katana. But what gets me hyped up is the fact that Toji was able to outpace Gojo's use of blue. Now I understand that this was nowhere near a current day blue that we typically see Gojo use, but regardless it simply shows off how far ahead Toji is in terms of physical abilities. Anyways with this, Toji uses his environment to his advantage going at super speed and completely confusing Gojo. With a few distractions, Toji pulls off one of the biggest JJK heists ever, and that was to quote unquote kill Satoru Gojo. So what makes Toji so incredibly powerful even though he has no curse technique? Some might say that his heavenly restriction carries him, but it's Toji's battle intellect which makes him the most feared, as observed against Gojo, understanding his opponent and using that to his advantage. This will make his fight against Yuji even more special. To top things off, Toji would nonchalantly find his way to the tombs of the Star Corridor by only tracking footprints and smelling the odour of both Ghetto and Riko. Toji would face off against Ghetto's Rainbow Dragon, to which I would assume is a special grade curse, but we go on to witness Toji effortlessly slicing right through it. Now this is where things concerning Toji's power get interesting. During this battle, Ghetto summoned his imaginary vengeful spirit known as Kuchisake Ana. This would entrap Toji inside her domain and create a binding vow that can't be broken until he has answered her question. But it's Toji's reaction to being trapped inside of a domain which surprises me. He did not react or care whatsoever. So my assumption is, Toji has probably dealt with several domain expansions in his past, and with his inverted spear of heaven, he's managed to turn the tides. With that being said, Toji would go on to overwhelm a special grade Suguru Ghetto, annihilating him and then knocking him out. But Toji was wise enough not to kill Ghetto due to him storing thousands of powerful curses, which Toji regards as a nuisance. Shortly after this though, Toji would meet his demise in the most brutal fashion possible. <laughs> But that wouldn't be the end of Toji's chaos. We would see him resurrect from the dead through Ogami Seon's technique. Toji's heavenly restriction was so powerful, it had overrode Ogami's curse technique, allowing Toji to return and just become this killing machine that only reacts instinctively. This would lead to Takuma Ino being on the brink of death due to Toji and also the death of Ogami. But things get real when Toji forces his way into Dagon's domain expansion, grabbing Maki's playful cloud with ease and then with his intense power and speed, obliterates Dagon inside his own domain. After this, Toji would face off against his own son, with Megami realizing that Toji is faster than a three-finger Sukuna. 
which is one hell of an accomplishment. But throughout this, it would be a cat and mouse battle until Toji regains a little bit of consciousness and uses that to prevent himself from killing his son. But all in all, throughout all of Toji's recorded battles in the JJK series, he is undoubtedly the strongest heavenly restricted character. I know Maki is extremely overpowered, but we'll leave that discussion for a later date. The main thing I want us to take from Toji's battles would be that his insane physical powers coincide with his decision making and battle intellect. This in itself would help a lot when we break down the hypothetical battle between himself and Yuji. So now moving on to Yuji Itadori, which important battles has he gone through for us to come up with an exciting scenario for his fight against Toji? Well for this we'll be dissecting three of Yuji's most important battles where he himself had to prove that he is of high standard without the help of Sukuna. The first one being his battle alongside Aoi Todo against Mahito in the Shibuya incident arc. After the fatal wound inflicted on Nobara, Yuji's entire will to fight was shattered. That's only until Aoi Toto steps in and reignites the fire inside of him. Yuji would make a comeback by utilizing his black flash. Throughout this fight, we witnessed the ever so talented duo attacks of both Yuji and Toto, with all of them bringing out 120% of their true potentials. Mahito goes on to use his soul multiplicity, but Yuji and Toto's reaction speed is top notch. During this phase of this battle with Mahito, we are shown off to Yuji's incredible speed and reflexes, rebounding Mahito's attacks and finding his feet ready to go again, reminiscent to that of Toji himself. But the moment Mahito awakens his domain expansion for 0.2 seconds is when things begin to get serious. It says here about the speed of Yuji when compared to Mahito's domain, stating, Yuji was even faster, already running towards Mahito to exercise him before the activation of Idol Transfiguration. But the fastest was Mahito, who had already activated his curse technique. What exactly can we take away from this statement? Well, we can understand Yuji's speed to a better extent. Even though Mahito pulled off a once in a lifetime trick, the narrator exclaims how Yuji's speed could have possibly caught up to Mahito, but because this was a rare occasion, Mahito edged forward with his ability. You could even compare this with Toji evading Gojo's blue technique, but due to certain circumstances, Yuji wasn't able to prevent Mahito's attack. Anyways, with that being said, Yuji would display immense hand-to-hand -hand combat and then obliterate Mahito's final form with his consecutive black flashes through the control of his divergent fist. This battle alone would change Yuji's entire perspective of how he should approach battles from now on. Becoming a cold-blooded killer, stalking his prey, Mahito would admit defeat and beg for Kenjaku's help. The next serious battle, which would display all of Yuji's physical capabilities, would come during the Culling Games arc going head to head against Higuruma. Before this fight begins, Yuji knows full well that Higuruma acquires 100 points, meaning he has killed 20 sorcerers or so, but it's his intuition, battle intellect and incredible physical capabilities which results in Yuji taking the win against such an overpowered technique. Essentially what Yuji gets trapped in is Higuruma's deadly sentencing, a cursed technique slash domain expansion. The first round of this battle, Yuji is declared guilty by the Judge Man, thus leading to him losing his cursed energy and having to evade Higuruma's gavel. But it would be Yuji taking advantage of the situation to catch his breath again by declaring a retrial. But things would get even worse when Yuji is once again declared guilty for the deaths in Shibuya. But this time around having to undergo execution through Higuruma's executioner's sword. But even still, Yuji outmatches Higuruma in pace and power also using the environment to distract his opponent. Higuruma understood that he would get completely wiped out in a physical contest against Yuji and decided to give up. This sequence reminds me of how Toji took advantage of his environment to face off against a teen Gojo. However, this battle would tell us how far Yuji has gone in a short span of time, finally using his brain in battle. The final battle of Yuji's which would explain his updated strength was when he faced off against Sukuna yet again in chapter 213. Of course, at this point, Sukuna would still be in his 15 finger form, but surprisingly, it would be Yuji's first time facing up against the King of Curses in the mortal world, being launched miles away by Sukuna's punch, but then immediately recovering after, jumping an insane distance, destroying the ground beneath him. Sukuna would be taken by surprise by Yuji's power and speed, 
saying what is this strength? I get it, the boy is from that time. Although Sukuna was being held back by Megami from the inside, Yuji's strength and determination is frightening. He had even taken on Sukuna's not as powerful dismantle several times, following up with a solid punch to Sukuna's face. Now with the assistance of Maki, they went on a complete slugfest against Sukuna, but unfortunately this fight would be put to a halt once Uraume intervened. So what does this battle say about Yuji? It tells us that Yuji has a great chance of taking on Toji and that this battle would be an insane watch. So with a better understanding of both of their fighting achievements, how will Yuji vs Toji turn out? So going back to the scene we had created, Toji comes across a young and determined Yuji Itadori in the depths of the Tombs of the Star Corridor. Toji is excited at the fact that he gets to face off against one of Godo's talented students whilst Yuji prepares to take his fighting stance. Now the question for this battle was, does Yuji stand a chance against Toji? And the answer to that is of course he can. In the latest chapters of Jujutsu Kaisen, concerning the Sorcerer Gauntlet match against a full form Sukuna, Yuji was taking hits head on against him and even recently displayed that he can now use reverse curse technique which is something we'll now add to this battle between Toji. With that being said, I do see Yuji pulling off the first move in this battle, and that is to get as close as he can to Toji. This is because Toji is someone who can pull off devastating blows from a distance with just his cursed tools, however the biggest obstacle for Yuji would be avoiding Toji's split soul katana. This is due to the fact that this cursed tool can target Yuji's soul directly and can cut through any sort of physical toughness as seen when Toji effortlessly slides through Geto's Rainbow Dragon. So in order for Yuji to get the upper hand in this fight, he would need to close the distance and make sure, and to make sure Toji is unable to pull out any of his cursed tools. Yuji will need to target Toji's inventory curse, which he has latched around his waist. But the difficult thing about this though, is how on earth will Yuji rip away that curse from a physical monster? Distractions against a person who bears no cursed energy is useless, so in that case, Yuji would need to test his own physical limits, get as close as he can and attempt to use Black Flash for a split second. But this is where things begin to get a little more interesting. Knowing Toji's nature and how he approached both a teenage Gojo and Ghetto, the one cursed tool he took advantage of the most was his inverted Spear of Heaven. So now let's say with Yuji closing the distance with his Black Flash all fired up, I reckon with Yuji approaching him, Toji would get the slightest cut on Yuji, thus causing Yuji's cursed energy to come to a halt. The exact same scenario with what happened to him against Higuruma will happen again with Toji. However, we don't know how long of an effect the stoppage of Yuji's cursed energy will be, but luckily for Yuji, he is also a physical beast. Now during this phase, let's say that Yuji was indeed cut by the inverted Spear of Heaven, but during this sacrifice, it would cause Toji to put his focus directly on getting a hit on Yuji. But with Yuji sacrificing his curse energy, in turn he manages to rip off Toji's inventory curse. All Toji now has is his inverted Spear of Heaven, and of course the inventory curse will only listen to Toji's demands, meaning we won't be able to see Yuji take full advantage of Toji's cursed tools. So now we are down to Toji practically using a useless tool, so he would abandon the inverted spear of heaven. This will now lead both Yuji and Toji going head to head in a pure physical contest. In this scenario, I see an absolutely amazing display of hand to hand combat between the pair. From my point of view, I reckon Yuji will be off the mark by just a little in terms of speed and power, but this would thrill the sorcerer killer himself. With this battle undergoing heavy hand to hand combat, it will last quite a while, especially knowing the endurance of Yuji. Since Toji's battles against Gojo and Geto only lasted a few minutes, I see his fight against Yuji happening for a lot longer, maybe around 30 minutes if possible, but because of Toji's battle experience and him being a lot stronger, he would definitely win. Yuji with no cursed energy having to endure whatever attacks Toji throws at him, he will certainly reach his limit. But because of the amazing physical capabilities that Yuji displayed, Toji wouldn't kill him but rather acknowledge him, leaving Yuji knocked out and walking away. In this sense, you could say Toji would be battling against a much younger version of himself. So with that being said, the ultimate victor of this battle would be none other than Toji. There are so many other outcomes this battle could have taken, but I've decided to go with this one since it gives both Toji and Yuji to fight at 100% with all their weapons. I'm sure the outcomes was obvious, but it's always fun to make these. Yuji still hasn't reached his full potential, but regarding this hypothetical battle, he isn't that far off from Toji's physical abilities. But what do you guys think? How would you see a battle between Yuji and Toji turning out? Be sure to let me know down below. As always, thanks for watching.